Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's Precision Digital Webinar on our water and wastewater instrumentation solutions. In today's webinar, we're going to take a look at how Precision Digital can help you with your water and wastewater uh, instrumentation needs, help you solve those applications. And we're going to do that by taking a look at some actual examples of solutions we've helped with in water and wastewater plants. Before we get started, however, I have a few bookkeeping notes I'd like to share. First, you may have noticed that you are in listen-only mode for the presentation today. Uh, there are simply too many people on the line to have this many open phone lines going. And so instead, uh, just us presenters are going to be talking today. But if you'd like to ask questions or interact, you have the ability to type a chat into the lower left-hand chat box that should be on your screen. Uh, that's a great way for you to ask questions of us or give feedback on how it's going. Uh, and at times when we do survey questions, things like that, if you click on other, that would be how you communicate in us. Speaking of questions you may ask, the two most commonly asked questions at any webinar I do is, can I get a copy of the slides? And will a video recording be available of the webinar? And the answer to both is yes. Mid next week, you should receive an email that will have both a way for you to download today's slides as a PDF, as well as a link to a video recording of the webinar. And you can share that out with any of your colleagues you think would get value out of it. Lastly, a personal request for me. At the end of the webinar, you may see a survey pop up. Uh, if you do, I'd sure appreciate it if you would fill that out. That gives me an idea of how we're doing here and gives you an opportunity to share with us what you might like to see in future Precision Digital webinars. With that, we're going to go ahead and get started by introducing your two speakers here today. I am Joe Ryan, the VP of Sales and Marketing at Precision Digital. And having been with Precision Digital for 15 years now, I've had the opportunity both as a design engineer to develop some of the products that you'll see here today or perhaps earlier iterations of them. Uh, as well as to work about the sales and marketing side, looking at water and wastewater applications, how our customers are using the products, and the kinds of features that we can uh, bring into those applications to really make them complete solutions. And Mark, perhaps you'll introduce yourself. So I'm Mark McKinnon. I'm the Senior Account Manager here at Precision Digital. I've been with Precision Digital a little over four years, been uh, working with instrumentation companies for over 30 years, and uh, I've been in more uh, wastewater treatment plants than I, than I care to count, but uh, have done a lot of municipal industrial applications. Looking forward to our presentation, and I'll turn it back over to Joe. Thank you very much. Now that we've shared a little about ourselves, perhaps you'll let me ask you a question. First, I'm wondering how you learned about today's webinar. Was it by one of the emails that we sent out? Did you find it by keeping an eye on predig.com slash webinars? Did you see a LinkedIn post about it? Or maybe there was another way, uh, in which case I'd appreciate you typing in what that other way was, just so we know how people are finding their way here. I'll give you another few seconds to get those answers in. Looks like the vast majority of you found us out via email. There are a couple of people who clicked other. So once again, if you'll just tell me what that was in your chat box, I'd sure appreciate that. And the last question for now, I'm wondering who here has received a copy of our Water and Wastewater Instrumentation Guide in the mail? Uh, there's many more of those that are going to be coming uh, early next year. However, we did do an early mailing on these, and I'm wondering who here might have seen that. That's a print version of much of the information that you're going to see in today's webinar here. Uh, it's great for our distributors to review with our, their water and wastewater customers, and great for end users at those water and wastewater plants, uh, new operators out there to get to know a little more about Precision Digital and where we fit into your solutions. All right, thank you very much. So let's talk about today's agenda and takeaways. In today's webinar, we're going to look at some water and wastewater solutions, actual pictures and stories behind what our meters are doing in the plants, and give you a sense of the actual applications and locations that we can help. We're going to talk about ways that we can help you optimize your operation by reducing how many parts you've got installed by using precision digital units as the core of your control system or as a local redundant backup for your control if it's being done by PLCs or in the control room. And really we, what we're doing all this for is to study success stories, see how other people have been successful with precision digital so you can duplicate that yourself. And as far as takeaway goes, 
really my biggest takeaway here is that the next time you have a water or wastewater application, when you need to do some, some measuring, you want to see what's going on with that measurement, and you want to do some control of your process, you'll consider Precision Digital as an option. Obviously, there's a broad product line here, and so today's webinar is not going to help you pick out a particular product, perhaps, but at least let you keep in mind what we can do for you, and maybe you'll reach out and let us help. So with that, Mark, perhaps you can talk a little about the water and wastewater solutions that we'll see here today. Okay, thank you, Joe. Uh, this presentation follows the 36-page guide that Joe mentioned, and we hope that this guide shows you how Persistent Digital does provide a more complete solution for level, flow, temperature, pressure, turbidity, and many other applications that you'll see in water and wastewater plants. These six pictures are some of the applications that we'll talk about in the next uh, half hour or so. The first one you see upper left is the uh, upgrading of filter consoles. And we will go into that in a little bit in a future slide, but uh, that's certainly a big application that we see in uh, wastewater, or actually probably more water treatment plants. The totalizer that you see on the right here this really is showing that we do totalization for flow applications. We usually have the flow rate on the top and the totalization on the bottom. But the other thing this shows is we're not really just general purpose NEMA 4X. We have a wide variety of uh, enclosures we could put our meters into. They could be explosion proof. They could be intrinsically safe. Uh, we have a lot of customers that want class one div two non-incentive, so we do have those meters also in addition to, of course, uh, just NEMA 4X GP, uh, like we see here. Uh, you'll see that we monitor digester temperature, digester level, open channel flow, a lot of open channel flow applications. We will see that we actually do a lot of wastewater applications that are just uh, in industrial plants, maybe pharmaceutical, food and beverage. And we can control and alternate pumps. We do a lot of pump control. A matter of fact, if you go to www.pumpcontrol.com, you'll come to our website and you'll see how we do uh, pump control in lift stations, wet wells, clear wells, and uh, in some plants. We'll also see that we do, we add alarm capabilities. We do a lot of gas monitor applications. So this is a gas monitor application. We'll monitor gases and show the display well, actually, we'll not monitor them, but show them for the chlorine, methane, hydrogen sulfate, and other da gas detection systems, like oxygen, oxygen deprivation. And lastly, we'll talk a little bit about wireless. We do have a lot of wireless applications that we saw with our 900 megahertz frequency hopping spread spectrum. So some of the features that you'll find useful in water and wastewater applications with our meters First of all, as I mentioned a little bit before, we do have uh, UL listings. So we have UL listings, UL listings for electrical safety, and that would be for UL and CUL for Canada. Wide operating temperature range, so we go negative 40 to 70 or 160F. Sunlight readable displays, we have a lot of very bright displays. You see some of them on this sand filter console right here. We have bright displays that can be seen from 30 feet away. We have our Helios that you can see from 100 feet away. So very bright sunlight readable displays, definitely for outdoor use. And then, of course, NEMA 4X. Pretty much everything we sell is going to be NEMA 4X at a minimum because obviously our installations are in wet and dirty areas. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Joe. Thank you, Mark. So what I'd like to do before we dive into the application stories and photos is talk a little bit about the common features and capabilities that you're going to see in those photos. Uh, instead of going in detail in every single one about the wiring and the setup and the part numbers involved, let's just talk about a few of the general things you're going to see that the precision digital meters are doing in these pictures. And so the first one's going to be that we not only display, but we also now offer light and horns, which are great for alarming possibilities. And so what you see here are units like our Trident X2 panel meter, our Helios large display meter, and our Consolidator Plus multi-channel controller. And what we've done is either directly on the meter, in the case of the Helios, 
or on the enclosures, in the case of the Trident X2 and the Consolidator, we've added these lightened horns to the top of them. These are connected into the relays of the units, and they allow you to have whatever color or set of colors you may want here uh, to display the status of your system. What's great about these as a system is that Precision Digital provides you not just the meter, but the enclosure, and the enclosure has cutouts for the reset buttons and the light and horn. So you've only got a few minutes worth of installation work to do to get this all up and running. And now you've got a real control package that's just ready to be installed out there in the field that can have big bright displays on them so you can see them from 30 or 100 feet away, but then also have lighting indicators with a horn on there to get attention even further away or really bring the operator's attention to it in case there's a problem. Probably the most common feature present on all of the examples we're about to see is the fact that precision digital units provide the power you need to run your transmitter loop. And what I mean by that is if you've got, for example, a two-wire transmitter, we provide the 24 volts needed to run that 4 to 20 milliamp loop. And that eliminates the need for you to provide a power supply inside the enclosure, adding just another part and another cost. All you've got to do is connect up your P plus to the transmitter, the minus of the transmitter to the milliamp plus, and then you do a little jumper wire across the P minus of the common, and you've got a fully isolated power supply running an isolated loop going to your two-wire transmitter. Now, if you've got a four-wire or a three-wire transmitter, we provide up to 200 milliamps on that supply to run that. So for anything other than, say, a gas detection unit, that means we've got plenty of power to power up your transmitter. And again, you just use our P-plus to run the power terminals, and then you bring your 420 milliamp signal into our milliamp plus in common. If you had a four-wire transmitter, you just connect it up using the four wires instead of the, the jumper P-minus in common. And what's great about this is it means that all you're doing is connecting two devices. You don't have to worry about loops. You don't have to worry about having DIN rails in the bank to hold power supplies. It's just a lot easier to set up your system when you use us as the power supply. Now, to give you an idea of the kinds of complexity that precision digital units are, are capable of doing as far as controlling your systems, we're going to take a look at this system showing our new Consolidator Plus multi-channel controller. Now this particular unit is populated so that it's got eight pulse or switch inputs, 16 4 to 20 milliamp inputs, five relay outputs, and then it comes standard with four digital outputs. We also have the Modbus TCP IP option on here, our first unit with a uh, Ethernet Modbus capability. So what are we doing in this example? Well, this is showing one consolidator all wired up to read a wet well. And so as you can see in the wet well over here, I've got two pumps. Each one of those pumps is being cycled through dual pump alternation. And we're using that through some of the relays that are coming out of the consolidator plus. Now in addition to that, I want to know that these pumps are working. I want to have a solid understanding that when I tell the pump to turn on, it's actually turning on. So we've got a current transformer here that's bringing in information to let me know that the pump actually is getting power and that it's actually turning on. We've got bearing temperature monitoring coming in on a 4 to 20. We've got vibration monitoring coming in on a 4 to 20. And we've got a digital contact letting us know, or just a discrete contact letting us know if we have a seal leak. And all of those are coming into your Consolidator Plus. They can all be indicated if there's a problem. I've got that going for both pumps. I've got a couple of flow switches that come into those switch inputs just to let me know if uh, flow is actually present. And so now when I tell a pump to turn it on, I can confirm it's working through power, I can confirm it's working by, through bearing temperature monitoring, vibration temperature monitoring, seal leaks, and the flow switch. So I can be very confident that what I'm telling it to do is actually happening in the field. To control those pumps, I need to know the level. So I've got a submersible pressure transducer. And in case there's a problem there, I'm confirming that, say, no, with an ultrasonic level transmitter up at the top of the wet well. Again, both those coming in on 4 to 20s to the Consolidator Plus. And if you're alarming and uh, verification, I've got high-level switch floats and low-level switch floats that, again, I can bring into those switch contacts just to make sure that everything happening in this well is what I think it is. 
Elsewhere nearby, we've got a flow meter for the pump coming out of the well, which we're bringing in through a 4 to 20 milliamp signal, as well as checking discharge pressure. And we've got four gas detection units that are also all bringing 4 to 20 milliamps into this single unit. If any of these detect a problem, we've got a red and green light and horn on there. So green lets me know everything's okay. Red's going to tell me that there's a problem. And the horn will go off when that red light goes off, so somebody has to come over and acknowledge it. This is powered by 24 or 120 volts AC. It's actually got both power inputs on every Consolidator Plus. And so generally in this application, we're using this universal power supply 120. However, if that line fails, if that rail goes down, we've got a backup 24 volts that is also connected. We've got our Modbus TCP IP connected to our telemetry gateway so we can pull information out and view it remotely. And then we've got our digital outputs going to an auto dialer so that we can send messages to folks that something's going on in the field. Now, this may be a lot compared to the applications you see in your wells or similar locations, but it gives you an idea of the kind of capabilities you can get out of a unit like a Consolidator Plus. So this is much more than just simple display. A more common application for the Consolidator Plus is uh, monitoring tanks or sumps at multiple locations. So you're bringing all these signals in, but you're actually monitoring different sites. And so here we've got our Consolidator Plus unit, but it's, instead of monitoring one location, it's looking at four sodium bisulfate storage tanks and two brine sumps. And every one of these storage tanks has a pair of relays for pump alternation control to keep those running. You've got a level transmitter at the top of the tank, bringing in a 4 to 20, which is what's going to control those relays. And then you've got a set of high and low alarms, which are being read off of that level transmitter. And so it's doing less control per individual tank than what we just saw, but it's doing it in all four of these locations. And then it's duplicating essentially the same setup in the brine sump. Now here, too, I've got my Ethernet TCP IP that can go out the operations center, and I've got a red light and horn on here to alert folks in the field if there's any problems. So when we see these applications that are coming up, keep in mind that they're doing a lot more than just displaying information from a transmitter. They really can be the center of that control system. And I also want to touch a little bit on how we can help you connect up these, uh, these systems using things like our wireless transmitters. So in this example, you've got two digesters, a west digester and an east digester, that all want to send information back to the control room on this site. And as you can see, you've got all kinds of roadways that you really don't want to trench. And even if you did want to trench them, it's going to be an extremely costly endeavor. And so to add new transmitters, they put their transmitters up the top of the vessels, and then they connected it up to our PDW-90 field unit. Our PDW-90 is our point-to-multipoint system. And so we've got a, a base station over here in the control room, and then one of these field units at both the west and east digester. What's great about these wireless systems is you wire up the system like it was a 4 to 20. And what I mean by that is you've got a 4 to 20 milliamp coming out of your transfer going into the field unit. And then back at the control room, it comes back out of the base station as a 4 to 20, and in this case, loops around through the loop leader display here that you see, this loop-powered two-wire transmitter, to get you your reading, your, your feet reading. And then it could even go into the PLC or the SCADA system. And so it's really a wireless bridge designed to seamlessly break a 4 to 20 milliamp signal, so you don't have to run wires. But on each side of the wireless system, the rest of the system just thinks it's a 4 to 20 that you hardwired back to the transmitter. So it's a very easy setup. And in a case like this, we have nice outdoor line of sight capability. Uh, you can get a lot of range out of it and a lot of reliability. So one more question for you before we jump into our application stories. Uh, we talked a little about the Consolidator Plus. I'm wondering how familiar are you with the Consolidator Plus? Have you had an opportunity to use one and set it up yet and consider yourself an expert? Are you familiar with it? Meaning you've probably heard about it. You might have specified one or looked into using it. You're not really sure what it is, but you might have heard of it, so you know very little about it, but you know that it is a product. Or are you curious what the heck a Consolidator Plus even is? 
And look at the results. It looks like we don't have anybody who considers themselves an expert on that product here. Not a surprise. It's a new product, less than a year old. Um, however, uh, it does look like many of you are familiar with it or at least know a little bit about it. So happy to see that. And with that, Mark, why don't you take us through some of our water and wastewater success stories and application photos? Okay, thank you, Joe. The first one we'll talk about, I mentioned a little bit earlier, is filter console upgrades. So this is usually in sand filters. These are where we see old, hard to see digital panel meters on filter consoles that have been replaced by our X2, our Trident X2. So what do we mean by Trident X2? Well, Trident X2 is really just two times the size of a regular Trident. So if we take a look at some of the Trident X2s in this panel, you can see three of them here, very bright meters. These meters can be seen from like 30 feet away, uh, even in direct sunlight. So they're very often used in filter console upgrades like we see here. The front of them, of course, are going to be Nemo 4X, and then they would mount into some type of panel that would be Nemo 4X also. So really extremely common application that we would see, uh, certainly in water treatment plants, would be filter console upgrades. And we do like to see those Trident X2s in them because of the fact that they're so bright and make it so easy for the operators to see those primary variables. The next one we'll talk about is level feet niches at a water booster pump station. So a lot of times we see customers that want to see readings in feet niches. And this was the case with this one. We see that this is feet niches. We look at this, nine feet, six inches, three eighths of an inch. We could have provided just a regular ProView meter that would read 9.53 feet. But people, if they're doing level, a lot of times they do like to see the reading in feet and inches. So in this particular example, what the customer had, you can see there's a guided wave radar here. And it's a little bit hard to see the display. So that's where we come in with some type of precision digital meter. And like I said, this is in feet and inches. We do have it mounted in our PD3411 enclosure. So that particular enclosure, not only does it mount both of these meters, but it does have a cover over it. So it's a real common enclosure that's used in water and wastewater plants because it gives you a little bit of extra protection from uh, spills and splashes on the meter itself. The next application is actually not in a water or wastewater treatment plant. It's actually at a, a pharmaceutical plant. So, Obviously, we do a lot of wastewater streams coming from industrial applications. I see a lot of them at the uh, food and beverage, pharmaceutical, other industrial applications where they really just want to monitor that uh, waste stream that comes out of the plant before it goes to the uh, municipality. So in this particular case, once again, we do have a Gataway radar device here. And the customer wanted to not only monitor that sump level, not only provide pump control, but they wanted an alarm. So Joe had mentioned the red light and horn that we have here, and that's what we're doing. That, that horn is 85 decibels, so very loud uh, horn and light. And we're using one of our Helios units. The Helios are extremely bright displays. As we can see here, we can read it from 100 feet away. So it's fairly, very common to use in applications like this where you want to make sure you can see that reading from a, a long distance away. So just another example of us using a bright meter, not at a water and wastewater plant, but an industrial plant, in this case, a pharmaceutical plant. The next success story we're looking at is uh, just a, a tank side level measurement. So the customer, this is actually a digester. doesn't look like one, but this is a, a digester application. Uh, we have some type of uh, level device here. I'm assuming this is probably a radar, but it could be ultrasonic. The tank side level that was needed, plus, once again, we see an audible and visual alarm indication. So we started selling these horn and light a little over two years ago. They've sold extremely well. We just add the horn and light here. 
we do provide a reset or silence button. So when that alarm goes off, if you want to reset the horn so it's not blaring at 85 decibels, you can go ahead and, and push the silence button. The light is usually set to either flash or stay steady until the alarm condition clears. So once again, we see we have a PD6001 feet and inches mounted into our PD, PDA2301 enclosure. And like I said, we do the horn and light also. The horn and light are triggered by relays that are inside this uh, ProView PD6001. So just a typical tank side water treatment application. The next one we have is lead lag pump alternation. So I mentioned earlier that we obviously do a lot of lead lag pump control uh, by the fact that uh, if you go to www.pumpcontrol.com, you'll come to our website. This one was a little bit uh, unusual in the fact that we had two pumps, both of them were 10 MGD, but the pipe coming out of this well only supported a maximum flow of 12 MGD. So because of that, we've got a couple different relays doing stuff. We've got four relays that are doing the lead lag pump control. Uh, we also have added an expansion module. So this expansion module here is called our PDA uh, 1004. It adds an extra four relay capability. So if we sell something called the uh, PD6006R4, which is what this is, that four means it's got four relays. Those relays are three amp single pull double throw. We added that module specifically because the customer wanted one relay to be programmed to turn on a pump failure alarm. So if there's some type of failure with the pump, we can uh, be notified of that by this extra relay. Once again, like I said, three amp single pull double throw relay. So a little bit different pump control, lead bag pump control alternation, but uh, certainly one we can solve by adding this four relay expansion module. Uh, Joe and I both have talked a little bit about our wireless system, our PD, uh, PDW90. With this, we have 900 megahertz frequency hopping spread spectrum. In this particular application, these two pictures that I'm circling are level applications. So we've got two sodium hypochlorite tanks, some type of level transmitters are monitoring the level. You see it's reading out in uh, gallons. That 4 to 20 also goes to our field unit. So here's the field unit for one sodium hypochlorite tank. Here's the other one. And then it goes straight to the base station. And the base station is back in the uh, control room. So that is the first application we see here. The second one is a flow application. So these two pictures here are the flow application. So the flow meter is connected wirelessly to our PDW90 system, and that 4 to 20 milliamp, of course, then goes back to uh, the control room. So just two applications, level and flow, where we see how we can use our PDW90 uh, wireless system to get signals from where they're at to where you need them to be. This next application is at a water treatment plant. We see six of our loop leaders, our PD6602 loop leaders. Very nice, the 14 segment, very legible display. And uh, these are being used for, we have three for pressure, so PSI. And then the bottom three are level, just reading out in feet. This time, feet and inches weren't needed. So six meters being used at this water treatment plant. Obviously, we're just taking the 4 to 20 milliamp. We can take a 4 to 20 milliamp, whether it's level, flow, pressure, temperature, turbidity. But these are loop-powered units. The nice thing about that is you can really just put these meters wherever they're needed, just break in the loop and install the meter. We obviously do a lot of open channel flow applications. So this is uh, influent flow, and we've got an ultrasonic level transmitter that's installed here. But it's over the wastewater, obviously influent. 
uh, and uh, the customer needed some way of powering up that ultrasonic transmitter, which of course we're doing with our PD6200 over here, relays for alarm and control. And this particular one is one of our Sunbright LED versions. So what does that mean? Our normal pro views are very easy to read, very bright, but we can provide for outdoor applications where there might be a lot of sunlight. We can provide the Sunbright LED. That means they can be seen from about 30 feet away. So in this particular case, this is a 48-inch Cipolletti Weir. We can see this influent values. This is GPM here, and this is the totalized gallons on our Sunbright readable display. And this is once again installed in one of our uh, enclosures that has a lid over it. This is the PDA 3407 NEMA 4X enclosure. The last application I'll talk about is once again open channel flow. This is effluent open channel flow, so a little bit cleaner water. And we can see that once again we have some type of ultrasonic transmitter installed here. It's over a partial flume. And they just wanted a, uh, a local display that was loop powered. That's what we see here. Once again, I think this is GPM on the top and uh, totalized gallons on the bottom. So very typical application that we have for water and wastewater. The last thing I'll point out is most of the ultrasonic transmitters I'm familiar with, this is the transducer, they probably have those open channel flow uh, weirs and flume equations in the ultrasonic transmitter. But if need be, we can program that into the precision digital device and do the conversion from uh, distance or head to uh, open channel flow. And once again, this is installed in one of our enclosures. This is our PDA, uh, PDA 2811, very low cost plastic enclosure, NEMA 4X rating. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Joe. Well, thank you, Mark. One of the things that you had mentioned back near the beginning of the webinar that we didn't see a lot of in those photos were hazardous area instruments. And so I'm just curious how often those of you in the audience here see the need for hazardous area instruments in your water or wastewater plants. Uh, is that something you run into very often? Is it only something you see once in a while? Is it pretty rare? Or do you never really run into that either because it's just not your area of the plant, it's not your expertise, uh, or you tend to avoid the need for hazardous area instruments as much as possible? And interestingly, it looks like 60-plus uh, percent of you here are saying that very often or sometimes you have a need for hazardous area instruments. So I would encourage you to keep in mind that some of the solutions you saw here today actually are available as hazardous area products, especially those uh, LCD panel meters, those loop-powered panel meters, the loop leaders, which are uh, available as intrinsically safe and non-incentive units. But we also have explosion-proof versions of many of the products that you saw here in the LED power meters, those black case meters like the ProView. So if you have a need for those, we can certainly uh, help you out there as well. Precision Digital is proud to show you all of these applications and more in our print water and wastewater instrumentation solutions guide. Um, I say we're proud of it because I think it's a great document that goes beyond just being a Precision Digital product catalog it instead really shows you how you can use us in water and wastewater plants. It talks about the applications that you saw here today, um, gives you a little bit more information about the products themselves, and it even has a great article in there on 4 to 20 million loops. So those of you who work with 4 to 20 million loops all the time, but certainly are not engineers or experts in the technology, there's a, a great multi-page article in there that talks about that. So I would urge you to request one of these, and we'll be sure to send it out to you. Now, before we take questions from you, I've got two more questions for you. Uh, the first one is, do you want someone from Precision Digital to contact you about our water wastewater solutions? Perhaps you are a, a worker at a water wastewater plant, water or wastewater plant, and you want to learn more because you have an application for us, or maybe you're one of our distributors who just wants to learn more about how to work with these kinds of products in these facilities. And then lastly, uh, this is specifically for the distributors in the audience. Would you like to work with us to mail our Water and Wastewater Solutions Guide, that print document that has all this information in it, to your list of water and wastewater contacts? Do you have a nice curated list that you'd like to promote out to? 
Because if so, we're happy to work with you to uh, find a way to do that. Let me give the answers for that one one more moment to come in. All right, great. So with that, we do have a couple of questions from the audience. So let's see what we can do about getting those answered. Uh, first here, I've got a question from Carlos that says, would the PDW90, that's our point to multi-point wireless unit, have an integrated battery? And unfortunately, it does not. These units are designed to be installed where there's 24 volts because generally you're going to be using that to power the transmitters anyway. And by powering them like that, we're allowed to transmit as fast as we can, uh, which is just great for update rates and systems. Now, I have seen them solar powered. I have seen them run on batteries. But your individual field point in, in the field unit is going to be a 5-watt device. So if you wanted to provide a battery or solar system, you've got to make sure you can drive that potentially upwards of 5 watts. Um, so it doesn't have a battery integrated into it. It doesn't mean you can't design a system that includes that. Uh, we also have a question uh, for, or a comment from Jaden talking about uh, my question about hazardous areas. And he mentioned that, you know, the digester and gas compression locations, um, cogeneration plants, all have class 1 div 1 requirements. Uh, and you're absolutely right. We've actually sold a fair amount of our hazardous area instruments, like our Protex Max, explosion-proof, full-featured, line-powered devices with relays and 4 to 20 outs. We've sold a number of those in just those kinds of applications. And we also have sold a number of our two-wire loop leader loop power displays in those kinds of locations where you just want to have a, uh, an easy-to-install two-wire display. And what's great about those is those are either intrinsically safe if they have to go in the Class 1 Div 1 area or non-incentive, meaning you can put them in the Class, I'm sorry, the Div 2 area next to it and you don't have to use barriers going out in your safe area. Uh, but I appreciate the comment. It's great to always have those examples. Clay has a question about the ProView meters withstanding the sun and, in general, Florida environment. So as a reminder, the ProView units are these uh, black case dual line panel meters that you've seen throughout the presentation. Uh, and the answer is that they hold up extremely well. Um, they are LED meters that are available with a sunlight readable display and are sun bright models. And so you're not going to run into any issues reading them, even in the midday Florida sun. And they are NEMA 4X sealed. So even if you don't put them in that fully sealed 3407 box like this one here, uh, they're going to withstand whatever kind of weather you might be throwing at them. And, of course, these are UL-listed products, and they have been UV tested. So being out in the sun for a long time isn't going to really do any damage to them. In fact, one of the advantages of being black is that they don't tend to discolor and such like you might see out of other units. Now, one other question that often comes up with that question is, what about temperature, right? They're black units. Are they going to overheat? And the answer is that that's all taken into consideration with the specifications of these products. And so you're not going to have any problem like that as long as you're not installing it uh, outside of the ambient temperature range, which I believe goes up to 65C, uh, you're not going to have any problems. Uh, we also have a question from Vernon. Um, a demonstration on programming or setting up the Consolidator Plus. Is something like that available? And what I would say is that with the Consolidator Plus, what you would find is that though it is capable of doing a whole lot, as a reminder, the Consolidator Plus is that unit that we were talking about earlier that uh, I had given these two examples on. Though the Consolidator Plus can do a lot, you don't code it like you would a PLC you program it much like you would one of our panel meters, and it auto-sizes the display and sets up your bar graphs and such as needed. even sets up the colors for you very easily. And so if you want to learn more about that and how to go about programming it, my suggestion would be that we can reach out to you and just set up a one-to-one -one video call. That's going to be much more effective at showing you how to program what you're interested in than any pre-recorded video that we may have. And lastly, well, you know what, I'm going to go back to that photo that we were just on a moment ago. And I'd just like to mention this is one of my favorite photos in the presentation. Because one of the questions I'd gotten when I showed this photo once was, why we show our products in such sort of low-tech installations, right? We have it mounted to a board attached to a fence. 
and that's not very fancy looking. And my answer to that is I love showing this photo because it shows the real world applications these go into. You know, these are not meters designed for the lab, although they certainly can go there. These are meters that are designed to go out in the field. You've, you've got this influent measurement going on. It's outdoors. It's out by a roadway. Uh, you don't have a, a, a control room or a, a large control panel in a shack or anything like that. So how are you going to get your information displayed? How are you going to have local control being done? Well, you know, sometimes you need some that's just rugged enough, rugged enough to get installed wherever you can find it. And in this case, where they wanted it was attached to this fence mounted to a board. And our NEMA 4X box, our UV resistant materials, are going to be able to withstand whatever kind of an environment they're throwing at it, even though it's mounted out here next to a road outdoors. So that's why I like showing this one, because it shows the real world kind of applications that our meters are designed to withstand. And the last question that we're going to be able to take here, as we are just about out of time, uh, is from uh, Siri, who just asked, do we need to offer the enclosure for an outdoor application? Uh, well, the, the unit you see here, for example, or in some of these other photos like this one, these are panel meters. And so uh, this is a 1 8 thin panel meter. It's NEMA 4X from the front, but the back of it has connections and such. So certainly if you were going to install this in a NEMA 4X application, uh, then you would want to install some kind of a NEMA 4X enclosure around it. Now, that you can provide your own. Perhaps you have a control panel already in place that's sealed the NEMA 4. You just put an eighth and cut out in it and install the panel meter. Or you could use one of a Precision Digital's enclosures that already has that eighth and cut out in it, like this PDA 2811 here, which will hold the meter and provide you that NEMA 4X seal. If you don't want an enclosure, we certainly have products that don't need it. And by that, I mean they already come with their own integrated enclosure. This Helios, for example, is NEMA 4X, and it's one big integrated product. That, that, that whole case is part of the Helios, so there's no accessory enclosure needed for that. Um, similarly, Mark had shown earlier, if you'll bear with me one moment, uh, this slide showing some of our explosion-proof units, or one of our explosion-proof units, and units like that are fully sealed in NEMA 4X. Um, we have a plastic version of that unit that's also fully sealed in NEMA 4X. So you don't always have to provide an enclosure to get that seal. Only if you go with the panel meters will you need to provide that enclosure. With that, folks, I would like to thank you for the 45 minutes of your time you gave us here this morning. I hope it has been helpful and that you learned a lot about how precision digital units can be used in water and wastewater plants to help provide better solutions, better visibility, and local control. I've got the emails for Mark and I up on the screen now if you want to reach out and contact any of us. As a reminder, you will get a copy of the slides and the video in an email that should go out mid-next week. And should you see that survey when we're done here, I would certainly appreciate you filling that out. So I once again thank you for your time. I wish you all a good weekend and an upcoming happy holiday. And Mark, I'll let you have your chance to say goodbye too. Yeah, thank you very much for attending. I really appreciate it. There was one more question from Carlos. I'll send him an email after this, but uh, we really appreciate your time, and have a happy holidays. Thank you very much, and we'll see you at the next webinar. Bye.